everybody would like to get home and enjoy the weather. So, um, my name is Sarah Barkman. I get the privilege of serving as the village clerk for the village of Shorewood. I've been here about a year and a half, so it has been a very pleasurable experience. So tonight, um, we're going to go through um, kind of what our boards, committees, and commissions do, their expectations, what to expect if you're serving on a committee. Um, for those who are new, maybe a little overwhelming, feel free to ask questions. Um, and know that everybody does have a staff liaison that you can reach out to if you have specific questions that we um, are unable to answer for you this evening. Um, so kind of on the schedule tonight, um, there will be, there, um, our trustee Carpenter is filling in for President Rosa for the introduction. Uh, we'll go over terms of office and appointments, um, expectation of citizen committee members, uh, meeting operating procedures, village services and committees, and then open meeting law and public records law, and then at the end we'll have some questions and answers. So I will turn it over um, to Trustee Carpenter. So I'm not President Rolick, but um, I'm Jessica Carpenter, and um, so I'm just going to talk briefly a little bit about the board. Um, this is my first term on the board, and um, our role is to really set the policy for um, the village, and then we have staff to implement and do the administrative uh, responsibilities behind the policy that we set within the board. But we really um, are an amazing community and have all of you, um, as well as a lot of other volunteers who want to participate and be a part of this process. So. Um, thank you. Thank you for your time and for volunteering um, on all of these committees. It's really an important part of what makes sure that great community to live in. So um, we are going to go through um, introductions and we can do one fun fact and how long you've lived in Shorewood and the committee or commission that you're serving on. Um, so we'll start from you. Oh, good afternoon. My name is uh, Enrique Figueroa. I'm uh, lived in Shorewood since July of uh, 2013, but for 11 years I lived just across the street from Edgewood, so uh, it was really anyway. Uh, I just retired last year from uh, UWM, a professor of uh, urban planning, and I'm an economist by trade. And I forget, what, what are you serving on? Oh, Parks Commission. Yes. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm April Toy. Um, I've lived in Shorewood for about six or seven years-ish. Um, I'm Megan O'Brien. I've lived in Shorewood for 20 years. I'm serving on the library board. Just upped again for another three years. I was just at a meeting. My apologies for being late. Okay. Uh, I'm Scott Cranky. I've lived in Shorewood for just over four years. I'm an architect and I'm serving on the design review board. Um, I'm Craig Bullock. Um, I've lived in Shorewood for 18 years. Um, and I'm doing my second term as on the police commission. Um, hello, I'm Pat Wilson. Um, we moved to Shorewood in August of 2013, so been here for six years. Um, this is my first time ever serving on a, any kind of public committee. Okay, what, and what committee? Uh, conservation you? committee. Great. Hi everyone, Nate Cade. Uh, I'm an attorney. I've lived in Shorewood uh, 15 years and uh, Board of Appeals. I'm Barbara Kiley Miller. I lived here with my husband for 29 and a half years and retired and just starting my second term on the planning commission. Hi, I'm Julie Radice. My husband and I have lived here, I think I'm the longest, 32 years <laughs> in now. Um, and I'm uh, serving on parks. My name is Mike Scully. I've lived in Shorewood since 1961. And I'm sitting on the design of Newport Peter. <laughs> so much for that. You're <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Karen Tidwell. Um, I am an attorney as well. Um, I am on my second term for the Board of Appeals, and I'm also on the Board of Review. Oh, and I've lived here with my family um, for about 17 years. Uh, my name is Kevin Green. Uh, my fun fact is that my wife and I met swing dancing. Um, we've lived here for almost two years, so I might be the newest. Uh, and I'm on the design review boards. 
I'm Travis Lombard. I'm the Executive Director for Waste Cap Resource Solutions. And I'm on, I've lived here for three years, and I'm on the Conservation Committee. Um, so, greatly appreciate all of your time and all of your commitment to our community. Um, so we will get started. Um, Sarah's going to Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we will go through um, appointments and kind of how appointments are made and what to expect um, now that you are serving on a board committee or commission. Um, the majority of appointments and reappointments um, are made by the village president with the village board confirmation. Um, the village president can make direct appointments without board confirmation for um, the police commission, board of health, and the board of appeals chairperson, so the person that's serving is their chair. Um, the president will make appointments without confirmation of the village board. See, terms of office. A term is three, four, or five years, depending on what uh, board committee or commission you're serving on. So the majority of them are three years, with the exception of CDA, I think is four years, police commission is five years. Um, there's about two or three of them that um, are a little longer than three years. Um, and then you can serve with a limit of no more than two consecutive terms. Um, when your term, uh, pro term ending is approaching, um, your staff liaison will inquire if you would like to be considered for a reappointment, for possible reappointment by the village president. Um, so at that time, you know, they'll contact you and if you so really want to stay on that board, um, you'll let them know and then the uh, village president will um, make her appointments at that time. Um, expectations in, um, of a citizen committee member. It's always good to be an active participant. So engage um, public and community outreach and then recommend and take initiative and proactive solutions. So, um, you know, be active in what's going on in the board and committee and commission that you're serving on. Um, take time to read the agenda. If you have questions, you know, inquire to your staff liaison. Um, they're here to help you out. Attendance. Um, you need to at least attend 50% of the meetings, and you may not miss more than three in a row. Um, the village board does have the ability to remove a member due to lack of attendance by a two-thirds vote. So um, if it's something that you're struggling to make time for, please know um, that um, attendance is important, especially in order to make quorum for meetings. Um, you know, some boards, committees, and commissions are bringing in attorneys or other people um, that if, you, if we can't have the meeting because we don't have enough people here and we have to cancel it, um, it, it's kind of a, a hard for people who are trying to get something approved. Um, so please inform your chair and staff liaison if you are unable to attend. Um, review agenda packet. So um, our agendas and packets will be posted on the website and most um, staff liaisons distribute them via email. Um, I think the one exception is board of Design Review Board, um, I believe, has sent a link to um, the designs that have to be reviewed. But I could be very wrong on that one. Um, so please review those materials prior to the meeting. Ask any questions. Um, you know, feel free to, to bring your questions to the meeting if you have any of them. Um, some boards, committees, and commissions have um, some visioning documents and plans. Um, your staff liaison will communicate those to you. Um, they can be such things as Vision 2025, um, an annual report and future priorities. Those are things that each board committee and commission will talk about, setting priorities going forward for the, for the next year and what that board needs to work on. Um, um, applicable planning reports, the um, Park Master Plan, um, the 2030 Comprehensive Plan, the Sustainability Plan. Um, so each of your um, staff liaisons will kind of inform you if those are things that you should be inquiring about. Um, always remember to be professional, um, show up, use appropriate language, um, look engaged when you're at um, your meetings. Um, you know, it's one thing to come and be sitting on our cell phones or um, not looking like we're actively participating. Um, dress appropriately. Be responsible um, as a representative of a public committee in the village. If making a statement on behalf of the committee, you must have permission from that committee. So if you're speaking on behalf of somebody to a reporter or something, you know, on, on Facebook or something like that, um, please make sure that committee is aware that you're making that statement on behalf of them. Um, 
just you are one person speaking for that committee, that does not mean that committee or board feels the same way as you do. Um, so please make sure you have that permission. Uh, remember that you are a village representative at public events and on social media. So um, you may not be a village board member, but you are just as important as the role that you are playing being on a board commission or committee. Could I just get a clarification? Absolutely. Okay. So uh, if I make a statement, public statement, mm -hmm. in regards to something about parks, yep. that automatically makes me representative of the commission? Um, not necessarily. Um, you know, if you're just making it on behalf of, say, you're at a parks meeting and you're speaking on behalf of what they're doing, um, or, you know, working on um, that, you know, just make sure that they know that you're making that statement. Um, it's, if you're not sure, it's best to check with your staff liaison first. A good example of that is, um, like, Conservation Committee, um, sometimes they'll make statements where they want to encourage organizations in the community, you know, have good sustainable practices. So what they would do if they want to make a statement on behalf of the committee is they would vote as a committee, as a body, to represent that viewpoint. Um, and then someone will say, on behalf of the Conservation Committee, we say da-da-da-da-da. So what that statement is saying is don't go out on your own and just say, the conservation, you know, the conservation Committee says da-da-da-da-da without getting confirmation from your, your, your elected, your, your governing group. Does that make sense? Well, actually, I was going the other way. Do I have a personal voice? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. We are not taking that away at all. It's just, if you're, so you're on the Parks Commission. So if you were to make a public statement saying, the Car Parks Commission feels this and this and this. If you haven't received confirmation from the Parks Commission to make a statement like that, that is not, that's not something that we want to encourage a representative to do. But if you were to say, as in, as Enrique, I believe this and this. You have every right to okay. do that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. When our uh, former village president Guy Johnson interviewed me to be on the Planning Commission, I did ask him if I was going to give up my First Amendment to rights to protest mm -hmm. village policies and you know speak out about things I didn't agree with, and he said no. No. So I would not be speaking for about anything that the Planning Commission might have jurisdiction over or might have to weigh an opinion on. Right. But you, yes, you have your own personal, correct. Right. right. It's just on, on behalf of the committee, you know. Um, so, yeah. A lot of people, when they're in that role, maybe won't recognize that it's your perspective versus the committee's or the board's perspectives. Yeah. Yeah. And that happens a lot with our trustees. So with the trustees, we always encourage them to disclose up front that this is not a viewpoint of the village board, that this is me as an individual coming with my opinion. Sure, thank you. Okay. All right. Um, so moving on to uh, making ethical decisions. Um, if there's a personal or financial relationship with a decision that conflicts with your judgment, um, you should abstain from voting. Um, if you're not sure or you need to consult with your staff liaison, if there might be a dilemma on that, um, please do so You know, prior to the meeting. Um, it's always better to you know, your err on the side of caution than it is to not know. Um, obey open meetings law, public records law, and any other laws related to you as a public representative. Our attorney will go very in-depth into this um, at the end of this meeting, and he is the best one to answer these questions for, so any of that, save till the end. <laughs> um, one thing, show respect for all perspectives and opinions. Um, you know, when you come <coughs> to a meeting, um, especially something like Planning Commission or um, Board of Appeals, you know, people will have a variety of opinions from the public or other members on the committee. Um, you know, everybody has their right to their own opinion. It's good that we listen to each other and, and try to understand. Um, and the village board may disagree with a recommendation that's provided from the committee. Um, that doesn't mean it's wrong or bad. It just means that that's, you know, their disagreement at that time. Um, one big thing, have fun. Um, this is a great way to meet other people in your community that share common interests with you. Um, I know, you know, we, Board of Regents, we just met today for four minutes, and um, we meet once or twice a year, and, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's a great committee. It's a great group of people. Um, it's nice to be able to interact with, with everybody. Um, enjoy your time. Celebrate your successes and accomplishments. 
um, and help recruit new people to get involved. And if we don't have any openings on committee, we're always looking for poll workers. So <laughs> <laughs> um, what is a quorum? A quorum is a minimum number of voting members who must be present at a meeting in order to conduct business. So um, if your <coughs> total amount of people in your board is, is seven, you need at least four to conduct business, typically one more than half. Um, so each board committee and commission will vary um, in size. Some do have alternates appointed um, in, you know, in case that a regular board member or commission member cannot be present. Um, that alternate will serve in place of that person. Um, but you do need form to conduct the meeting and to discuss business and to vote on items. Um, so if you do get to a meeting and there is no quorum present, um, um, you would not be able to conduct business, that meeting would have to be canceled. Um, so it is very important to contact your staff liaison, even if it's last minute that you cannot make it, um, because just one person sometimes swings that down um, that we don't have enough people attending. Um, role of the chairperson. So um, not, most people aren't the chairperson for their committee, um, but if they are, and this is what to expect, um, in most cases, they are appointed by that board, committee, or commission that they are serving on. So um, at your first meeting, typically, you will nominate somebody as the chairperson, and they will serve for that year um, as the chair. As the <coughs> they will call the meeting to order. They will fill it, facilitate the discussion. Um, they will lead the votes and also be able to vote. Um, they will help set the agenda with the staff liaison, and they um, will encourage ideas and decisions to be made. So they will you know, make sure that the meeting is still running and um, keeping on top of the agenda to make sure you're getting through the items um, and that um, the votes are being taken correctly. Any questions so far? Each board, committee, and commission has their own set of rules on how they conduct a meeting. The actions are considered through Robert's rules of order. Um, so when you get to your first um, board, committee, or commission meeting, you know, your chairperson or staff liaison will kind of walk you through and what to expect at that meeting. They each run a little different. Some of them are a little more informal than other ones. Um, so, um, you know, you'll, you'll be just fine in your first one. Uh, there will be approval of minutes. There's usually public comments if people are there to comment from the public. Um, and some of them have informal and formal hearings. Um, when making a motion, uh, you either say, I move another a uh, member will second that motion. There will be discussion. Um, there can be a possible call to question, um, or the chair can close discussion. So once there's a call to question, um, discussion must cease, and then you must vote um, on any motion that's made. Um, and then you'll take your vote. Sorry. What does that mean, call to question? You're calling for the vote to be taken? Yes. So, yeah. so the idea is that you, um, you know, there's been discussion, you've discussed it, you're still, you know, discussing the same thing over and over and over again. Somebody said we're not getting anywhere, you know, continuing the discussion, I call to question. Okay. Um, so at that time then the discussion must cease um, and then there must be take a vote must be taken on the motion. So um, amendments are made um, during discussion of a motion and must have a second to be considered. So if someone um, moves to amend a motion um, and there's no second, that amendment would fail. Um, same thing with the original motion. It has to have a second. Um, or, or it does fail. Any questions on that? All right. So I'm going to your presentation, Sharon. Sit down here. Okay. Well, um, this is one of my favorite nights um, because we get to interact and, and meet some of the people and the, the, some of the old faces and the new faces who are here tonight. So. Um, thank you for being here. My name is Rebecca. You can call me Becky. Um, and I've been here now for about a year and a half, and it's been uh, just a really um, wonderful experience to kind of learn more about Shorewood, having grown up, grown up here in the area, and now looking at it from the business and the operational perspective, for me is really fascinating. Um, so I want to tell you a little bit about my role here. In general, the, long, the cliff note version is management of operations. So um, from a committee perspective, I'll interact the most with the committee chairs. Um, we've extended some outreach efforts and want to continue those to 
to provide more information to the committee chairs and just have more of a one-on-one -on -one connection as we're moving forward. Um, because so many times I find that if people know that you're on a committee here at the village, they want to approach you and talk about other matters because they already think that you're in the know um, on some other items. So we want to try to do a better job internally about providing some of that information. But I have the wonderful experience for working for seven people. So not many people have that luxury, right? <laughs> Most people are accountable to one boss or one thing. So I work for seven people equally in the scope of um, our local government here. Um, and so that is, for me, um, personally and professionally, a really great experience. Um, primarily because those seven people are elected and represented from the people who are here in Shorewood. And everyone comes to the table with their different lens. Um, and so from a directive perspective, I, I work at the pleasure of what that voice is from the board. So not one person directs that, but it's what actions they take in unison, um, or in the majority that I respond to. So um, it's really unique, and it's a great, it's a great opportunity to, um, to push your comfort zone in different levels because this group changes all the time. Oh, that's the other thing. So the group changes and has a capacity to change every year. So as you all know from what you do, either professionally or wherever you work or whatever groups you're related to, when you change one of those people in a small group, the group dynamic change, changes, right? So you'll see that same effect when you're working on individual committees that, and commissions that you work on. But it's really unique and it's really, um, it's great because it, it continually pushes your thought process. Um, <coughs> On a, on a side note or a lighter note, and I won't be long-winded because Sarah's going to watch my time because the attorney's up next and everybody always loves listening to Nathan the most. But I have to say, um, one of the best things about working here in Shorewood is the staff who I get to work with. So I worked in um, a number of different municipal environments and what I truly value about your committee liaisons and whoever will assist you is that they are all sincerely passionate about what they do um, I don't know about you, but when I interact with, pe with people, there's nothing more riveting to me than someone doing what they do with the passion and the drive that they have. And just genuinely wanting to problem solve and, and look at things and say, what's the best way we could do this? Um, so I'm excited for you to have an opportunity to work with them. And I really encourage you to reach out to them prior to meetings if you have questions. That's the best um, compliment you can get as a staff liaison. So just give it a whirl, even if it's not an important question. <laughs> it's a great point of contact. Oh, this is my contact information, but my phone number's wrong. I don't even know where 2705 goes. That's my line. Oh, it is. OK. Well, so then you get Tyler, too. and Tyler's going to forward it on 2701. If you want to call it. Yeah, I put this together two years ago. And oh, OK. <laughs> that was habit. So. I didn't catch that on the first yeah. Um, um, 847-2701. And thank you for asking. <laughs> so here are some of the different services and departments that we have. Police Department, De Public, um, Department of Public Works, which in that we also include the scope of our water utility and our sewer utility. We don't talk about that a lot, but that's all three divisions are included there. Our Planning and Development Department, which also is the home to our building inspectors. Um, our clerk and customer service department, which is primarily the, pe the wonderful people we run into downstairs at the front desk. Um, our finance department, the library, um, the senior resource center, and then the village manager's office. Um, so if you're ever in the building, step up and say hello. Um, it's odd for me to be in a municipal facility where there are these many floors, and so people don't usually want to take the stairs all the way to the top. So sometimes it's nice to see people's faces, walk in, um, we welcome them. Parks so parks is going to fall, parks, service of the parks, meaning maintenance of the parks, will fall under the Department of Public Works. Great question. I like that. And by the way, really intrigued to see what you, or intrigued to hear what you think about some of our parks, just given your background. <laughs> okay, so four village facilities. Um, this is technically five. 
right now. Fifth would be including the fire station, but I'll talk about that last. It's a great project to get to work on this year. Um, Village Hall, which we're in, Village Center, um, which a lot of people just refer to as the library, but it's comprised of a multitude of services. So we have the Senior Resource Center, we have the Health Department. If you've not visited them, it also has um, an office space there and then the library up above. And then other people can also utilize that Village Center space. So it's, a real, it's just a hub of activity. The police building, which is um, now on Wilson Drive, we're almost done with the interior renovation of it. If you have not taken the time to go over to go over and see the facility, I highly encourage you to do do so. Especially if you've also been in this facility. Has anyone been in this facility? Yeah. Okay. Yes. I voluntarily. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we can talk about that later. <laughs> no, so that I mean, it's just it's a night and day difference. So I encourage you, they'd be welcome to take you through at any point in time. So reach out to the chief if you've not been over to the new one. And then our public works um, building, which is also water and sewer and parks, um, which is over on Morris. And then we, we also own um, the fire station, which used to be police and fire. Now it's just single sourced um, by the North Shore Fire Department. We currently own this site. Um, have entered into a memorandum of understanding with North Shore Fire Department to go through the process of working with their hired architect to renovate the facility. So it has been a great process working with their architect and um, just pushing the mindset in terms of how we approach this building. Um, right now in the design process, they've still maintained all four original walls. And so now we're working into the mechanicals and hopefully we'll be going through some design review board approval for all of you on DRB who are here. Um, and, and then going, taking the project to bid. And then it, and then it really um, rubber meets the room because it, then it's gonna be about the numbers and how we accommodate for that. But really it's just been um, just a wonderful project. There's nothing, there's nothing more, there's nothing greater to me than being in one of these roles and knowing that you can be a part of a project that puts something fundamentally back in the community that's going to be that way for the next 50 or 75 years. You know, and usually they're not the easy projects, you know, they're not the, um, the sound bites that people want to hear, but it's just the stuff that takes work and really um, just leaning into some tough decisions. So this is one of them, so I'm really excited to, to tackle that. So we contract for a number of services, and a lot of people, you know, in the day-to-day, -day, most people hear about, when is that trash going to get picked up, or recycling, as it <laughs> and one's trick-or-treat. Um, so these are some of the things that maybe you don't interact with on a daily basis, but that we contract um, for um, to provide you with service. One is the North Shore Fire and Rescue Department, which is pretty self-explanatory. They're going to put up the fire, they're going to try to come save you if you're ever in a heart attack. North Shore Health Department. We have um, all seven communities in the North Shore partner for this collaborative. They have two offices, um, one which is located at the Village of Brown Deer, and then another which is located here in the Village of Shorewood, um, over in the Village Center. We also, as in terms of the North Shore and the seven communities, we also collaborate on the Bayside Communication Center, which is essentially dispatch. So you call 911 or you call into the police department. These are the people who you're speaking to in the village of Bayside who dispatch on behalf of all our seven communities. We contract for village assessor services. This will be a topic and buzz amongst the community because we're gonna be coming up on a revaluation. So I would expect to hear those who, board of appeals, board of appeals, right? Yes. Um, well, no, board of review, sorry, board of review. Board of, you might get some things too, but <laughs> you get the fun zoning decisions. <laughs> um, and actually, I think you're going to get an interesting one soon, so I love seeing what board of, um, board of appeals does. And we also contract for village attorney, um, which is um, Nathan Bayer, who we're really fortunate to have an experience um, to work with. Uh, we work with him very closely in a number of different things. We also contract for some other legal services, um, depending on the service area, because things are specialized. So um, CDA has their independent legal counsel. We use a, a separate legal counsel for personnel-related matters, which is typical in our environment. But Nathan gets the best of it. He gets all of us in some way, shape, or form. Um, and then we also contract out for village engineering services. So under statute, we always every year designate a village engineer. Um, we switched engineering um, providers this last year, so now we are going to be working with Strand. 
um, which has been a really positive experience. And a lot of our individual projects here in the village, we will actually RFP and um, bid out those independent services for different road projects. Um, but we're always required to have a village engineer um, at the ready and who does some more routine um, details with us. Now we have a number of community partners, and these are just a few, because this list could go on for a while. Um, but here are some of the main people we internally work with a lot. Um, Milwaukee County, the Shorewood School District, the Shorewood Historical Society, which also has a location in this building, um, down in the lower level. Um, the Shorewood Men's Club, the Shorewood Women Club, the Shorewood Connects, um, which is primarily administered through the Senior Resource Center and the Elder Services Advisory Board. The Shorewood Waters Project. Um, has anyone heard about our new uh, mascot? Mika? Mika the dog? Mika is a selected, um, we just want to be like the brewers, right? <laughs> but Mika, if you have not met this dog, is incredibly sweet. Um, but Shorewood Waters is actually a, a contracted vendor through our public works department, and they focus on trying to provide clean water and educate the community about clean water and its resources. So when you hear about typically rain barrel projects or um, ways that we want to interact with the water or care for the water, that's what's going to stimulate their projects. Milwaukee Riverkeeper, which is a local organization about of which we interact with because we are bordered on one side by the Milwaukee River and on the other side by Lake Michigan. They're a very active group. There's the Intergovernmental Cooperation Council. This is um, a collaborative of um, chief elected officials, so mayors, village presidents, and then village managers who will attend these meetings collectively once a month as a group. And there's always different topics and where we share different things that are going on or can bring topics to for um, collectivity of Milwaukee County um, and how we work here together. Sewer PAC is our Southeastern Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission um, that we interact with. Um, because they are our regional planning commission from a planning perspective and have different resources. Um, MADAC, you can go and get a dog or cat there. You can get your dog spayed or neutered there. Um, they are also the people who we coordinate with for animal control in addition to the health department. Um, MMSD, Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewage District. I love it how you yawned as I got to sewage district. <laughs> We actually have a very wonderful executive director. I'll, I'll like cup it up a little bit more. Um, a wonderful executive director. They are a great partner. Um, we have a collector system that sends our sewage to that district. So we have our own sewer utility, but we don't have a um, a, a plant um, that cleans that. So they are our distributing agent. And then the Surfrider Foundation. I don't know if any of you have been to um, Surf Atwater. Have you heard about it? Okay, well, if you haven't, they're a group who um, embraces the water and the beach, and um, every year they do a great event down at Atwater Beach and some different activities to help promote good usage and, and just to kind of care for this asset that we have because we are really, we're lucky. Not many people get a beach like this. Excuse me, why, why wouldn't the, uh, the bid be what you're working They would be. See, I told you the list was exhausted and they gave two slides. <laughs> But presumably it is a partner. They are a partner. Yep. Um, so the business, does everyone know what the bid is? So the bid is the acronym for the Business Improvement District. So um, at the discretion of the village board, they can have an ability to form a bid district that then is governed by their own separate set of bylaws. Um, and they also have the ability to assess within the village. So every year the bid levies an assessment on the property owners that are located within district, which is, which is primarily the commercial corridor on Oakland and a portion of Capitol. Um, those businesses and, and that board, um, they're a wonderful partner. They are the group that sponsors and provides to the Criterion Bike Race. They are the group that has sponsored and um, put on many of the different activities that have resulted in closure of Oakland for purposes of street festivals. Some of those are private, but the, the bid has done, I don't want to say the majority of them. Um, and they have a really, we just got a permit application today from them for the closure of Oakland over, I want to say two blocks or a block. Um, they're going to be launching a new special event this fall um, called the Shorewood Feast. 
which is um, gonna be, if you like food, I'm into food. If you like food at all, you'll, you'll want to attend. There's gonna be tickets. Pretty much what it is is gonna be dinner on Oakland Avenue with a multitude of different vendors specializing in different food types and having food drink. Will they be mostly um, shoulder-based vendors? Or? Some are and some are not. Um, I know Blue's Eye has a sit-down dinner. I just read the permit today. Um, and then we have two different beer tent vendors, Draft and Vessel is hosting one, Bid is hosting another, and then there are other food providers on that route. I just don't recall what the specifics are. But I'm curious to learn more. Is the Bid director still involved in creating new businesses to fill empty spots? Yes. Yes. So as a municipality, we contract some of these services with the Bid, and that is one of, one of the roles that we contract with them with. Um, to promote marketing. So many times the planning and development director and myself um, will have interaction with the executive director um, in terms of following up on what information she's been provided or if there's questions about if a new business wants to come in and how that interacts with some of our rules and regulations here. Um, yeah. Anything else? These are good questions. I like it. Anything? Oh, okay. Do I get the slide too? Oh, okay, good. So, um, Shoreward in comparison to other municipalities has many citizen committees or volunteer committees. Um, so, I put this list out here just to show you some of the other people who are involved. So, each of these groups will have up to five to, I want to say on ESAB, aren't there nine? So, there are a lot of different people interacting at, at every different point in time on different topics. Um, so one of the reasons why I want to focus on some more interaction with the chairs is just to provide to them maybe that larger perspective because sometimes when you look at what the different groups work on, there are collaborative lines of synergy. Um, so we all know how that works. We're all far better as a group than we are alone in terms of how we go to approach something. So just trying to provide that a little bit more um, amongst the chairs so that as we continue to grow as a community, and, and when I say grow and cultivate our future, um, that we have an opportunity to see where some of those lines of synergy are, um, because we'll be even better if we work together and how those can come together. Ah, uh, now it's Nathan's time. <laughs> so I always value Nathan, um, because a lot of times when you're calling your attorney, it's never, you know, well, I mean, we, we do a lot of preparatory stuff together, but a lot of times, okay, here's what's going on, how do we wrestle with this? And the one thing I really appreciate about Nathan is that he's always optimistic, but more importantly, he's incredibly passionate about the law. <laughs> so this is one of, this has typically been one of the favorite sections for um, the orientation, because people, all right, before you start, so the code word for the people that will be viewing this at home is papaya, so we'll report back to work. Um, well, thank you very much for that introduction, and first of all, um, congratulations on all being uh, to all of you on being appointed. Um, they say all the politics is local, it doesn't get more local than these boards and committees, and there's a lot of really, really good work that goes on here, um, in, in these committees that will impact the legislation that's ultimately passed by the board and the actions that are taken by staff. So. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is uh, the two topic areas that I was, I was asked to cover relate primarily to open meetings law and open records law. And to give you a perspective, um, I, I just wanted to say you don't have to, to remember all this because you'll have great staff liaison and members of the board that will be working with you on all these committees and um, they'll be able to help guide you through these things. And the other reason, we, you can't get, we're going to do a brief overview, you can't get all this in 10 minutes or less, just to give you some perspective. This is the Wisconsin Open Meeting Law and Compliance Guide put out by the Wisconsin Department of Justice. You can see how big that is. There's a separate one, uh, Wisconsin Public Records Law and Compliance Guide, again, put out by uh, the same department, and it's even a little bit bigger. So Start reading, um, mate. These are good resources. <laughs> Start reading. Yeah, well, no, these, but these are great resources. And again, you know, we're just going to do a general overview today, and, and you know, you'll have staff liaison that will be able to help, help you with those issues. The one thing, did you go over? Did you go over the secret handshake everybody gets now? <laughs> okay, so before we really get into open meetings law, there, there's a really there's a big distinction between what I would call legislative functions of some of the boards and committees and more of a quasi 
judicial function. And what I, what I mean by legislative function is assisting with the development of policy or making recommendations to the board or staff. And then, and on the other hand, the quasi-judicial function is undertaken by committees such as the Board of Appeals or boards, Board of Appeals, Board of Review, Planning Commission, Design Review Board, and the Police Commission. In those particular instances, um, members of those bodies have the opportunity to grant variances, uh, special exceptions to the village code, uh, approval of plans or denial of plans, and, and may be involved in disciplinary proceedings as well. So the main concern there, if you're on one of those types of committees or boards, is we want to be giving the people that come before those, those, uh, those bodies fair, uniform, and unbiased decisions, uh, decision-making process. And, and the, the key word there is what we refer to as due process. And what we really mean by that is we don't want people to prejudge uh, before they come to the meeting. And, uh, and that, sounds, that sounds basic and dumb, but there are municipalities in the state of Wisconsin and elsewhere where they've gotten in trouble because somebody posts on social media, come to the meeting and watch me deep six the uh, request for a special exception or a, a building permit. Uh, come, and, come and watch the meeting tonight because I'm going to vote against this. Well, that doesn't really help because Someone could later say, well, I, I wasn't given a fair chance, I was not, the decision was made by the body before I even submitted my evidence, before I, I spoke, so, so we want to avoid those kinds of things, and, and it, it has happened. Um, and the other thing is not to consider evidence other than what's presented at the hearing. Um, sometimes we've had follow-up later where someone said, well, you know, I, I think this member of the board or committee was, was on the fence with relation to this issue. Here's some more evidence on that topic. If, if that happens, you know, just let them know. I, I, I need to forward this to the entire body. I'll share it with everybody. We'll make it part of the public record, and then maybe the next time the board or committee gets together, we'll consider that, and we'll make sure that that's noted in the minutes so that everybody in the public understands. So the key process there, or the key word there, is due process. So when we talk about open meetings, I think that I want to start with reading from the statute, which is normally extremely dry. I would never, ever do this. But I think that there's something in Wisconsin statute that's quite remarkable. And it says, in recognition of the fact that a representative government of the American title is dependent upon an informed, but, excuse me, is dependent upon an informed electorate, it is declared to be the policy of the state of Wisconsin that the public is entitled to the fullest and most complete information regarding the affairs of government as it is compatible with the conduct of governmental business. I think to me that's a pretty remarkable statement of if you look at, you know, if you've traveled around the world or you just watch the nightly news, you know that that's not necessarily the case everywhere. So I think that's really powerful and that's something that's really important um, in Wisconsin. So what do we say when we say that a meeting is taking place? Um, you know, how do we know if a couple of members bump into each other in the line at the grocery store and say, hey, did you notice that there's this item on the agenda? Is that a meeting? If you bump into each other at the line on, on the fish fry on Friday night over at the park, uh, you know, is that a meeting? So they've come up, they've, those issues have been decided by courts, and, and the definition that they've come up with, that the state Supreme, came up, came, the state Supreme Court came up with, is a meeting occurs when members of a govern, governing body convene for the specific purpose of conducting business that they're assigned, and that they have the number of members present to determine the body's course of action. So um, that's going to be really important to keep in mind. So the, the questions that we always ask, oh, excuse me, um, we, we get a lot of questions about, um, there's this thing called a walking quorum, and what do we mean by that? Um, that means that members don't necessarily get together here and have a meeting, but they might email each other. They might, uh, they, they might have a phone chain or an email chain going on, and they conspire behind the scenes or behind closed doors so that the course of action will later be determined when they come before the body and they all vote as a block. Okay, that can, that can, that, that's a problem. The courts have called that a walking forum, and it's, they've defined it as a series of gatherings among subgroups of members that are smaller than the size for a forum, but for the express purpose of agreeing to act in a uniform way to control the body. So we want to avoid those. Now, sometimes there's email strings where someone says, hey, what's information about you know, X, Y, and Z? And that's OK. If, you're, um, if, if you receive an email from your staff liaison or someone on the board and it says, 
see enclo or enclosed, please find materials related to X. There's absolutely no problem with that. Where we can get into problems is if there's, if there's a huge email chain as a follow-up, well, what about this? I think because of that, I'm going to vote this way, and then somebody else weighs in, and then you've really got a meeting by, by email. We want to avoid that. We want to avoid having, having, a, meeting, having a meeting via email. So um, another question that we get a lot of times is, if I can't be there in person, but there's a really critical issue that I want to vote on or I want to discuss, can I appear by phone or Skype? Technically, the answer is yes, there's a provision in these statutes to do that, um, but we try to avoid it if possible because as a practical matter, it's difficult if you've got exhibits that you're dealing with or you're trying to have someone show some information or you're trying to discuss, you know, I've got, I've got the plan uh, submitted here on page four. It shows this in the diagram or it shows this in the drawing. What do you think? It's just, as a practical matter, it's difficult, um, but if it's absolutely necessary, we can accommodate that type of thing. So, um, with respect to, um, oh, we get a lot of questions about um, social media posts and, and email and Facebook and how that relates to both open meetings and, um, uh, and, and, and open records. And um, I think it goes back to the email string again. Um, you could have a string on social media where somebody posts, you know, uh, I, I'm a trustee and I think X about this issue that might be coming before the board on the next on the next agenda. And then another member might weigh in and say, well, you know, what about have you evaluated it from this perspective? And then arguably someone could say, look at this string. Here's, you know, here is essentially we, we, we've got an uh, improper communication outside of the normal uh, meeting. So, so we want to avoid, we, we again, want to avoid those email chains and those Facebook strings. So um, the other question that I've been asked many, many times is, well, what happens if you know there's a social gathering and two or three of us happen to be at the fish fry on Friday night over you know at the Hubbard Park Lodge, and we bump into each other standing there? Um, that's not a violation uh, as long as you're not discussing anything that's in, that's coming before your board or your committee. So um, the open records law. <coughs> Um, so the, the, one of the questions is, okay, I'm on a subcommittee, or I'm on a committee this or that, or a citizen committee this or that, are we even subject to the open meetings law? The answer to that is yes, but, however, there's a caveat there. For the most part, you will, this probably won't be an issue that you'll have to worry about or, or address for a number of reasons. First of all, under the village code, in chapter 138, it designates the village clerk as the legal custodian uh, for committees, commissions, boards, or other authorities created by ordinance or resolution of the village board. So, um, what happens is you'll usually get a packet before the meeting, and all that information is otherwise being preserved. So, you don't have to worry about that. And um, so, a lot of times people will say, you know, what about I created some personal notes for my own edification or to prepare? I created some chick chicken scratching on, on, you know, on the diagrams or the, the things that were submitted as part of the application for the conditional use or whatever it might be. Well, in the statute, it says that records do not include drafts, notes, preliminary documents, and similar materials prepared for the originator's personal use. So those are yours. And they've changed that definition, I think it was, I think it was three years ago. Um, so that's, that's a little bit more of a recent development in the law. So um, uh, unless there's something that, that might be unusual about your meeting <coughs> or um, you know, that those records are going to otherwise be preserved by the clerk and it'll be in your packet. So, um, the, so records are basically reports and recommendations from the committee, materials considered from third parties, and, and again, you're going to work with your, um, your liaison on that as well. So, um, one, of the, one of the biggest questions that I get, uh, especially with new board and committee members, is who should I copy on emails and how do we make sure that we're retaining records? When, you know, when, when there might be communications between us or with the citizen who has a concern and they say, hey, you know, I know you're on the Bicycle and Safety Committee and we want a stop sign over here and they send an email. What are we doing with, have we assigned committee and board members emails or no? No. We have not, okay. They, so they still the, use their own personal email. Okay, so here's my recommendation. It's the same as last year. When you get that, CC your staff liaison on it. And 
anything that comes in to our server on an official email, when you forward it to a staff member here, or any of the board members, or anyone who is assigned to the village of Shorewood, is it dot gov, I believe? Dot org. Dot org, that's it. When that comes in, it's captured. We have a, a we work with an IT department, and we make sure that all of that is captured and it's preserved. And any anybody that makes an open records request, we, we can go back in and we can have IT pull out whatever we need from that database. So if you're CCing, if you get that type of communication, if you're CCing the staff liaison on it, you're going to be properly preserving um, those emails if you're if you're doing that. Um, so, and again, would it, oh, it be clear then? If I'm communicating with my fellow Park Commission board members bilaterally in, in our both personal emails, mm -hmm. am I subject to open records law? Most likely, if the topic of the communication relates to an agenda item that is being considered by your board or committee, I would interpret that to be a public record. If it's, hey, Fred, uh, or Larry, or Sarah, or whoever it might be, um, did you notice that there's a, um, you know, the, part of the public uh, series, there's a concert in the park next week. No big deal. You know, even though you happen to be on the committee, it doesn't relate to any matter pending before that board committee, not a public record under the definition. If it relates to work being done by the board of committee, uh, my interpretation would be it would be a public record, so you'd want to probably CC staff liaison on that as well, and that it, would, it would automatically be preserved. Or pick up the phone. Or pick up the phone, absolutely. Absolutely, you can do that. That's a great. That's a great. That's a great. So the principle is that a, a, a private email is subject to open records law. It could. Yes. If if you're if you're communicating um, in on, on a matter relating to your official capacity, you know, the the, the best test is am I communicating am I communicating about a matter that may be pending currently on a specific agenda item before the board committee that I'm part of or is potentially going to be coming in front of that board committee in the near future. If the answer is yes, um, there's, you know, it's, it's probably going to be considered a public record. So um, it doesn't, there's no distinction between public or private, and that's why the police chief, I had this conversation with him when he started, and he said, well, do I really need to carry this extra phone for official business, and then that's my, my, my own one for my personal business? I said, technically, the answer to that is no, but if somebody comes and makes an open records request for anything related, you know, things that are on your phone, and it, you have a separate one for work, we can just hand it to them because you can have anything you want off of it, which makes it a lot easier. So, yeah. Uh, being a, one of the quasi judicial commissions, I have found that because we're supposed to be impartial before the meeting, that even if I have a friend who's on the village board or someone, other interested party short, it's best not to even have a conversation about anything that's coming up on our agenda. You know, I'm, it's, we're talking about somebody's personal property, and, you know, they don't have to know what my opinion is right. before the meeting, they'll hear it during the meeting. Sure, sure. And, and that's fine. Yeah, I mean, if you want to do that, that's a fine policy. Yeah. Certainly, you know, we'll talk about it at the appropriate agenda time. But if, you know, if, 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 you know, if one or two people, there's, there's also something called a negative forum where, there's not enough people to make the form, but if there's if if there's enough to block a piece of legislation, that can be considered a, what they call a negative form to act as well. But if you have, I've never seen a case where two members of a body that bump into each other and and discuss a matter that, that you know two people are necessarily a, that, that that's a negative form that's a form that's impermissible. If you bump into you know your your, your fellow committee person and you discuss the matter for a minute or two. And say what crappy idea that is. No, I would never do that. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, so really, you know, I think to review, if you're on one of those quasi-judicial boards or committees, try to be, you know, uh, make sure that we're being impartial, we give due process, um, and, you know, and, and for everybody, work with your staff liaisons to preserve the records. And if you ever have a question, you know, contact them. And if you have a legal question, work through staff, um, because otherwise, you know, they, they want to make sure that they're using all the resources in the most efficient manner, and they might know the answer, rather than having people call me directly. I don't mind doing that, but we want to make sure that we're controlling costs as well. 
So, um, you know, if there's a legal issue that comes up, if you get a request for an open record, um, you know, make sure you work with staff and, and, and we'll help you through that process. Because again, that, uh, that policy that I read, uh, that preamble to the statute that talks about recognizing that representative government is important and that we want to be as open as possible, everybody on the, from the board to staff uh, embraces that here. And, um, you know, we, we want to have the process be as open as possible. We always, these are all staff liaison, they will take care of noticing the meetings and posting them. You never have to worry about that. That will be done. And we always double and triple check those things. So if something is inadvertently not posted in time or doesn't make it onto the, you know, the website or whatever, it will actually cancel the meeting rather than, rather than risk having a meeting that that's not properly noticed. So, You've got people to do that for you. So we want to give you the tools to be successful so that you can focus on your specific area of your board or committee rather than worrying about you know, all of these ancillary issues. So, um, I really, again, congratulations to everyone for, for giving their time. It's, it's a lot of work uh, and you know, sometimes the only people that come out of the woodwork are the people that are unhappy with the decision that a board or committee makes. You really, you really hear somebody say, you know, oh, didn't make any difference to me. Or okay, good job. You know the, the people that that respond are the people that have a complaint about something. So it's a difficult it's a difficult work sometimes, um, and it's you know pay is not great. <laughs> it's volunteer, <laughs> and uh, it really means something to do it. You know it, it it's it's really important work. So um, it's a privilege for me to, to be able to come here and, and work with you all. And, and if you think of any questions that you don't have or that you didn't think of tonight and you want to forward to the staff liaison. And, and Again, um, you know, if, if, if resources, the last item on the agenda is always what resources are available so I can learn more. If you really, really, really are interested, <laughs> these are for free on the uh, Wisconsin Department of Justice's website. Um, but I don't recommend it as something that you want to curl up with in front of a fireplace because it's pretty dry. So, um, but thank you again for your, for your time. And, uh, I'll turn it back over to Sarah. So, if anybody has any final questions? All right. Well, thank you so much for attending. Thank you for um, you know, applying and committing to be on a board committee or commission. Um, I do know you will enjoy yourself. This is probably the most important part of your adventure. So, <laughs> have a good night, everyone. Thank you.